A few minutes ago, I tracked this coal front pushing its way into the Carolinas tomorrow. Now remember, it was also a coal front that brought us six confirmed tornadoes just last week. So I want to turn to meteorologist Jacqueline Shear live back on the ground in Kannapolis to explain why we do not predict a repeat of that tomorrow. Jack? Yeah, thankfully, Steve, you know, we're in Kannapolis right now in the same neighborhood that we were in this past Friday. And not only that, the same backyard. And you can see here where this EF2 tornado came through. They are still watching that damage there to their homes. But not only that, they're also still dealing with this. This is a tree that we showed you on Friday that fell on another tree. And you can see just how large that is, how much of a struggle that's going to be to get out of here. Now, of course, you can see from this video, the tornado itself was only one aspect of that severe weather threat that we saw on Thursday, torrential downpours, strong gusty winds from thunderstorms, also a huge factor. So another storm system, the last thing that they need. And this next cold front does have some people pretty concerned. Here's a clip of the line of storms on early warning Doppler 9 as they rolled in last week. These storms popped up along the frontal boundary, which just like it sounds is the boundary of a cold front. Now compare it to this future cast image of the front moving through tomorrow. It looks very similar and some of the severe weather ingredients we had in play last Thursday will also be in play overnight into tomorrow morning. But thankfully, some of the biggest ingredients will not be there. Coming up in about an hour, we're going to compare and contrast what we're dealing with tomorrow and how it compares to last week. Steve. Right, Jack. And of course, timing is a major concern for all this. And uh, we're going to be taking a closer look at that as that front works its way into the Carolinas tomorrow.